Now on Radio 4, it's time for Women's Hour with Emma Barnett. Good morning and welcome to the programme. Today, a world-exclusive interview for you, and a rare one at that. Yesterday, I had the honour of talking to the woman behind this. And this... I am, of course, talking about the one and only Kate Bush, who seldom gives interviews. But in a world exclusive, she has decided to share with me and you, the listeners of Women's Hour, how very pleased she is to be number one in the UK singles chart 44 years after her debut, Wuthering Heights, and with a song she first released 37 years ago in 1985, Running Up That Hill. Kate Bush has suddenly found she has a whole new generation of fans, a lot of them in their teens and 20s. Good morning to them. If they're joining us for the first time today on Woman's Out, welcome. I hope you'll stay and I hope you'll be back. And this new legion of devotees formed because of the use of that song of Running Up That Hill in a Netflix show set in the 80s called Stranger Things. And in case you haven't watched it, there are four seasons and one of the main characters is a girl called Max. And in her hour of need, involving a terrifying demon, her friends slot a cassette into her Walkman, remember it's the 80s, and play her favourite track by Kate Bush, and it literally saves her. Now parents around the world who have perhaps lovingly created vinyl and CD collections of Kate Bush's work are being asked by their teens, have you heard of Kate Bush? So shall we get on with it? Let's hear from the one and only Kate Bush. When we spoke yesterday on the good old-fashioned landline, more about Kate Bush's phone later, I started by asking her how she was feeling about being number one with her hit Running Up That Hill 37 years on after its use, very recent use, in Stranger Things. Well, it's just extraordinary. I mean, you know, it's such a great series. I thought that the track would get some attention, Mm. but um, I just never imagined that it would be anything like this. It's... um, it's so exciting, yeah. but it's quite shocking, really, isn't it? I mean, the whole world's gone mad. Well, I mean, you know, 37 years is the longest time, I believe it's a, a song has taken to get to number one. And uh, it's also in America. It's your first ever top 10 hit in the US, which I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's what's really wonderful, I think, is that this is a whole new audience mm. who, you know, in a lot of cases, they've never heard of me. And I love that. The thought of all these really young people hearing the song for the first time and discovering it is, well, I think it's very special. It's a a discovery by a a new generation. There's lots of people, of course, who who have held you dear to their hearts for a long time, who are probably feeling quite protective at the moment, especially when some of their children are saying, have you heard of Kate Bush? (laughs) (laughs) They're saying, "Uh, yes, very much so. Um, but, but, But in terms of this song and for those new audience members, for those people discovering you now... What's it actually about running up that hill, if you were to explain it to a new audience? Well, you know, I really like people to hear a song and take from it what they want. Mm. But originally it was written as the idea of really swapping a man and a woman, swapping places with each other, just to feel what it was like from the other side. Yes, and, and getting that experience. Yeah. If that, if that was possible. And uh, it wasn't originally called running up that hill, was it? No, it was called um, A Deal With God. I think they were just worried, the record company were worried that it wouldn't get played on the radio, that people would feel it was a sensitive title. Right. But, but So is that still how you think of it, as opposed to running up that hill? Because when you've originally named something, and these are all your creations, you, you, you can stay wedded to it, can't you? Well, yes and no, but some of them have had very strange titles that... You, you kind of have a working title that you quickly forget. But yeah, I think for me, this is still called A Deal With God. Now lots more people, new people as well, getting into the song. I mean, it's, it's so widely listened to across social media platforms as well, never mind streaming platforms. 
Have you listened to it again with new ears? Do you listen back to it? I never listen to my old stuff. But then, you know, when things like this come along, I'm normally involved in something like, you know, maybe doing an edit or Mm. uh, revisiting the track for some kind of other reason. I'm working on it. So, yeah, I hadn't heard it for a really long time. Yeah, well, I was imagining, you know, people also watching the video for the first time. It's such a beautiful video. You've, you've of course, trained as a, as a dancer with movement and, and all of that. It's, it's just wonderful pe- for people to, to see again. Of course, in this context with Stranger Things, which I know you, you obviously signed off on how the song was going to be used, was it important for you that it's a song that helps uh, a, f- a female character, that it helps Max? I think they've put it in a really special place. I mean, the Duffer Brothers created the series and actually we watched it right from the word go from the first series onwards. So I was already familiar with the series. You're already a fan at this point. Yes, yes, very much so. (laughs) Yeah. And um, I thought what a lovely way for the song to be used in such a positive way, you know, as a kind of talisman almost really for Max. And um, yeah, I think it's very touching actually. Yes, and and of course, people, you know, especially when they're younger, music do, does save people, doesn't it? It's so important to people, and that's at the heart of how the song is used. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they have really put it in a very special place, and I think music is very special. It, mm. It's it's different from all other art forms, isn't it? In a way, I mean, all art forms sit in their own space, but music has a way of touching people. Yes, and and. You'll always remember, actually, where you were when you heard something or or what it means to you. I mean, I was also thinking when I was wondering about why you signed off and it, why, why you were drawn to Stranger Things, but interesting to hear you're a fan. You know, is it also, is there a nostalgia there as well for the 80s? A lot of people loving the show love the fact that it's it's set in that era. Yeah, I think it was a great time. I mean, there was some great music in the 80s, but I think... I think it's an incredibly exciting time we're in now. I mean, okay, so it's an awful time on a lot of levels Mm. for people, very difficult. But it's also a time when incredible things are happening. Technology is progressing at this incredible rate that's pretty overwhelming, really. But, you know, there's so many advances in medicine and... There are positive things. You just have to look a bit harder to find them at the moment, I think. Well, I mean, if we're just looking at the technology in you, I mean, running up that hill as a hashtag is is all over social media platforms. On TikTok, running up that hill has had more than 616 million views. And, And you were always very cutting edge with technology. It was almost like you were waiting some of the time for the technology to catch up. Well, that's very nice of you to say so. I mean, I suppose, you know, I was using things like the Fairlight very early, which was a, a, a sampling machine, which, of course, now it's it's very... It's common now for that samples to be used in music all the time. Yes, but uh, then it was not as a, as a synthesizer and a way to make music. Well, it's, it, it's fascinating to think about, but I was also wondering if you missed the 80s because there were a lack of phones then. And when you did your concerts in 2014, you did ask for people or rather had a, a voiceover to ask for people to turn off their mobiles. And it seemed from those who went, people, people actually did turn them off because they wanted to, to have that connection. Well, that, you know, that was really great that people respected that because the thing was, you know, we were working in, in what was quite a small theatre mm. and um, I wanted there to be a really strong connection between the audience and, and everyone on stage. And phones are very distracting. It's a bit different in an open air concert. You know, it's not yes. quite the same, but this, we were trying to create an atmosphere with what we were doing. There was a lot of theatre and film involved and... Um, I think it did give a stronger connection to the whole process, really. Are you, are you on social media? Do you look at it yourself? Are you into your phone? I have a really ancient phone. <laughs> how, how ancient are we talking? Oh, it's very ancient. <laughs> but, it, but I like that, you see, because I spend a lot of time on my laptop. Mm. And when I go out during the day, it means I don't have to deal with emails. And everyone knows that. So I just get texts and calls on my phone and it means that I have um, I have a bit of peace <laughs> yeah that's very I, I might start taking that advice and buy myself an old brick just so that I can be <laughs> out of out of range I, I did also want to check do, do you know about witch talk 
a subset of TikTok. It's inspired by uh, Babushka and your look in that video. There's a whole <laughs> load of people very dedicated to you in that space. Do you know about that? No, it, don't. it sounds ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's that's some homework if I'm allowed to give Kate Bush uh, a bit of homework. But I, I also just wanted to bring up your your son, if I may, because in that concert that we were just talking about, um, you did pay tribute to Bertie. He was also uh, a constant presence during the show, singing in the backing choir on stage, taking part in several of the scenes. Uh, you said without him that that wouldn't have happened. He's now obviously some years on in his 20s. What, what does he make of a new generation discovering his mum? I think he thinks it's pretty cool. Yeah. I bet. I bet. Is he a fan of Stranger Things as well? Yeah, we all are. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I mean, our friends kept saying, have you seen Stranger Things when the first series came out? So eventually, you know, we thought, oh, OK, let's just watch it. And we binged watched it and then saw every series ever since. It's lovely because, you know, in a, in a similar way to Harry Potter, where in those early films, they were just little kids. Mm. And then as the films progressed, it becomes heavier and darker and those little kids turn into really talented young adult actors. And you have a different connection with something that's, that's moved through years, really, of, of watching them, them grow. And um, yes. Have you watched it? You yes, watch it? It's, it's actually uh, prescribed watching in my house. My husband's completely addicted to it and he, he already <laughs> loved you but was very excited to, to see that cassette go in and also have the memory of the Walkman uh, that we both remember very well. And, and you know, I was also thinking, what did Kate Bush do during lockdown? And, and perhaps you were binge watching like the rest of us, our favourite TV shows. Was that, was that the order of the day in the Bush household? Who wasn't? <laughs> that and gardening. And a bit of kitchen disco. Are you still, are you still into the moves? <laughs> Gardening's my thing now, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kate Bush, it is absolutely lovely to talk to you. Let me just read you one final thing. I did mention some of your original flat, original fans, uh, you know, thinking about this new generation finding you. And one person wrote, Kate Bush did not go through Wuthering Heights, run all the way up that hill to make a deal with God. Shout Babushka for you all to be finding out about her in 2022. What do you make of that? I just want to say, well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you to everyone because it's just, you know, it's just extraordinary what's happening and it's very exciting. And well, thank you, Emma. Thank you for giving me the time to, to say thank you to everyone and, you know. Well, Kate Bush, to, to hear your voice is a real treat. Thank you so much for, for talking to me and talking to our listeners. I'll let you go back to the garden. <laughs> and the brick, the phone that no one can get hold of you on. Thanks, Emma. Kate Bush. Yes, any time, all the time. She can come back, please. I did say that right at the very end of that phone call as she as she called in on her landline to the Woman's Hour studio. Definitely some moments of my life I won't forget and hopefully you will feel the same. Uh, Laura has messaged in to say, Good morning. Regarding the wonderful Kate Bush, I have loved her since she first blessed us with her truly amazing original music. I missed her dreadfully when she became, as Laura puts it, rather reclusive. I'm obviously excited and delighted that she's come back to us. Please could you ask her now to stay? Much love to Kate. And that is from Laura. Christmas says, shivers up my spine listening to Kate and her interview on Women's Hour. Not many artists command an involuntary physical response. Uh, another message here saying, I'm 51 and I think this is the very first time in my life I've heard Kate Bush speak in an interview. We've all heard our songs, but I'm not sure I've heard her give an interview before. I mean, she, she has given interviews. They are rare, it's safe to say. But thank you so much for, for being with us this morning. And, and it is very special to, of course, hear, hear her voice outside of song and what she's thinking about today with this remarkable number one uh, that she finds herself at the top of the charts 37 years on from that song coming out running up that hill uh, Kat says this is a you know massive coup for the program but an even bigger joy for us I am a Kate Bush newbie from the 2012 Olympics so a lot of people getting in touch please feel free to do so 84844 is the number you need to text us here at Woman's Hour and later on in the program Keeping With Music I'll be talking to the DJ and author Annie Mack, but keep those messages coming in.